Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the promotion ceremony in honor of Major James Mudd. Our host for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Eric Peterson, the Headquarters, Department of the Army, Deputy Chief of Staff G8. Distinguished guests with us today include the family of Major Mudd, including his wife, Leslie, and their sons, Jalen and Dominic. Thank you for joining us on this special day. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation by Mr. George Northington. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with grateful hearts. Thanking you for the many blessings for our family, our loved ones, and our friends. Lord, we have gathered together today to publicly recognize the talents, the gifts, the skills, and potential you have given to James. Father, we thank you for the Army's recognition of his faithful service, his leadership, and the potential for greater responsibility. We are grateful for the new opportunities and the endeavors that you will afford James to embark upon. God, we understand that all good things come from above and that promotion does not come from the east, the west, north, or south, but they come from you. O oh, merciful Lord, we ask your continued blessings upon James, Leslie, Jalen, and Dominic as they embark upon the path of greater responsibilities, the path of new endeavors, new opportunities, and greater aspirations. Always be with James as he carries out his duties. Give him the wisdom, guidance, direction, and understanding that it needs to perform in excellence. Father, be with Leslie, Jalen, and Dominic as they continue to support James, our nation, and our soldiers. We ask this in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce our host, Lieutenant General Eric Peterson, the Headquarters Department of the Army, Deputy Chief of Staff, G8. Thanks. And James, thanks for the opportunity to do this. You know, we've uh, not had the opportunity to meet prior to this. And, uh, I can't think of a better way to start a relationship than uh, having the honor to participate in an important milestone. Friends, uh, today we're going to take the opportunity to recognize the potential, the exceptional potential, of a fairly new teammate. Um, joined us back in January and has been uh, toiling in the wedges ever since. Um, have the great opportunity to have family with him. Leslie, Jalen, Dominic, 
you being here highlights the importance of family and our chosen vocation. None of us get here without the support of many and the sacrifice of many as well. So thank you for what you've done in underwriting his career and his accomplishments to this point. And I hope you take some significant pride in participating in what happens today. Young men, you really need to be proud of your dad. He's setting a great example for you. James comes to uh, the FD and G8 team with 17 years of very uh, diverse experience as an AGR, a National Guard officer from the Texas National Guard. A signal officer, he's held all of the commensurate responsibilities, which in the Guard is not a foregone conclusion. You gotta raise your hand, you gotta be prepared to accept responsibility um, for the challenging leadership jobs that are available. And you, you gotta compete for them pretty hard. And he's done that from platoon leader through company commander, uh, battalion level staff, operations officer and planner. Um, he's had a variety of those seminal experiences to underwrite uh, the credible technical expertise and the growing leadership responsibilities to bring him here uh, to contribute to this exceptional team. Along the way, though, he's also raised his hand and volunteered for some other significant responsibilities. He served as a CANDAC mentor trainer in the uh, middle of the 2000s in Masri Sharif, um, a tough time in that part of the world. I spent a significant amount of time in Afghanistan and know the area very, very well. Um, some, some great teammates and leaders doing their very best there and a lot of contribution um, by American soldiers and allies to help to give that country a fresh start um, and a lot of sacrifice doing it along the way. So I understand uh, you know, the personal attachment uh, to that mission and the sacrifice that goes with it. He also took the opportunity to uh, participate in OSS or Operation Spartan Shield in CENTCOM and that's an overarching mission that provides support, support and security throughout the entire Middle East and all the areas of U.S. interest. And it's with a little bit of pleasure that I had some involvement in that mission some years ago when I had the pleasure of mobilizing guard units that undertook that mission when we made that almost exclusively a National Guard mission with National Guard divisions and National Guard brigades. Um, taking that mission on for the nation, nose to tail, year after year, um, and a great contribution uh, of our National Guard teammates. And uh, he served there as a battalion staff officer, uh, providing signal support throughout the entire AOR. Um, a great experience um, in doing so. So as a very competent, well-trained, and experienced signal officer, one would think that we'd bring him here to the Army staff and align him with his area of expertise. <laughs> We're not that bright. We're not that bright. We threw James into uh, a bit of a quagmire, um, a challenging emergent portfolio that we have in G8 called robotics and artificial intelligence, something that we don't have a school or a military specialty for, but is on the cusp of breakout um, for game-changing capabilities that we're going to deliver to the war fighters. And with some malice of forethought, we have to put agile thinkers and problem solvers in there to help us ensure that we get the requirements for these capabilities correct and then that we align the resources to ensure that we are underpinning a path that delivers credible capabilities to our soldiers in the future. And that's exactly what we did with James. We brought him on board, understood his capability, his background, said, guess what? Here's a hot mess. <laughs> Get in there with a great team and put your oars in the water and start rowing. And uh, he's already earned a fabulous reputation for being a great teammate, strong intellect, and we're honored to have you here. But more importantly, our Army is recognizing your not just your experience, but most importantly, 
your potential, which we also see here, for future responsibilities. And today, we're going to take the opportunity to promote you to the rank of Lieutenant Clerk. So, so with that, again, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you and your family. And uh, we are going to take the opportunity to publish the orders. <clears throat> Please remain seated for the publishing of the promotion orders. Sir. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of James L. Mudd. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, signed Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. Mrs. Mudd and Sons, Jalen and Dominic, will now put on the new rank. We're going to take the opportunity to reaffirm James' oath. Um, and for those of you in uniform or those of you who have served in uniform, I'd ask you to listen carefully to the words of the oath. Our oath is unique in that it is not an oath to a man nor to a flag, but it's an oath to ideals, ideals embodied in our nation's constitution. Ideals that can't be trampled, can't be killed, can't be burned. Ideals that are born in the heart and in our minds. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, James Mudd. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. In the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And, I, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Lieutenant General Peterson. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Mudd. Lieutenant Colonel... <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Mudd will now make presentations to his wife, Leslie, and children, Jalen and Dominic. He is presenting Leslie with a bouquet of flowers consisting of yellow roses in the honored tradition of Texas and calla lilies, which are her favorite flower. General Peterson, General Marks, Ms. McCants, thank you so much for being here this morning. Sir, thank you for the, taking the time this morning to be here. 22 years ago, I enlisted in the Army as a private E2. And today, the Department of the Army, G8, is hosting my promotion. I am geeking out. <laughs> you know those signed photos of senior leaders that you see at dry cleaners? I tell my wife, whatever you do, don't let me ask the general for a signed photo. <laughs> With all sincerity, sir, thank you for hosting the ceremony today, and I know this promotion comes with tremendous responsibility. You know they say no matter what rank you are in life, your wife is always two ranks higher. So I would be remiss today if I didn't congratulate my wife on making Brigadier General. Congratulations, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
you know, as I, as I've told that story before, uh, but this time she said, uh-uh, I'm the president. So <laughs> as I was preparing for this event today, I looked for a way to define my wife. Uh, so I looked in the Bible and I found this passage in, in Proverbs. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. All the things thou canst desire are not compared unto her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. I can't put into words exactly how blessed I am to have Leslie in my life. Um, she's been through it all with me. Nearly 12 years ago, we were planning our wedding, and I remember being so busy at work at, at the time, I said, babe, don't worry. It's, things will slow down. Uh, if I could go back in time and, and slap that man who said that, I would, because uh, it never did. In fact, it was quite the opposite. I've missed so much in the last 12 years, and Leslie has sacrificed so much to get me here today. Thank you for your sacrifices. Saying Leslie supports my career would be an understatement. Over the last four years, I think we've only consistently lived on the same roof for probably about seven months. But through it all, she somehow manages to keep the boys engaged in sports, manage our doctor's appointments, maintain the house, help the boys with their homework, plan our vacations, and excel in her own career and education. Leslie continues to press me, impress me with the woman that she is, and I'm very proud of her. She's my best friend and where I find my peace. You make me a better person, a better dad. Thank you for everything that you do. You're the music that plays in my soul and the compass that leads me to happiness. I love you with all my heart. To my sons, Jalen and Dominic, daddy loves you both. <laughs> Jalen's into sports and Rubik's Cubes right now, and uh, Dominic's into Minecraft. The other day, we went to the boys' room, and Jalen was beating his record uh, by solving a Rubik's Cube under, an, under a minute. He wants to be in a, a national Rubik's Cube competition someday. And uh, Dominic was playing Minecraft, narrate, narrating like he was a YouTube YouTuber. <laughs> Today on my YouTube channel. <laughs> the world is so different today, but I know you guys will excel in anything that you do. Life is full of surprises with you. You keep us on our toes, and I wouldn't have it any other way. To my dad, seeing you in uniform inspired me to join the military, and I know my mom's prayers have helped me more than I will ever know. I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. You guys always made me feel loved. To my Aunt Susie, I remember the care packages you sent me in Afghanistan. You've always been there, and I'm blessed to have you in my life. To my in-laws, Sylvia and Charles, you guys have always been there for us when we needed you. We know we've asked you to travel so much over these last few years, but your willing to, willingness to adjust does not go unnoticed. Thank you for being there for us and the boys. We love you. I know I would not be standing here today if it was not for the leaders that believed in me, leaders who took chances on me, and leaders who inspired me to be the best version of myself. Leaders such as Brigadier General Ulis, Colonel Trout, Colonel Rodriguez, Colonel Turnbull, and Lieutenant Colonel Delgado. Thank you for your men mentorship over the years. Colonel Delgado, my previous battalion commander, is here today. Last year, we, were, we deployed soldiers in over 1,500 line items from Texas, Alabama, and Louisiana and spread them into seven countries in the CENTCOM AOR. And by the way, the first time we, we, we met each other was at the MOBE platform because of COVID. Deployment wasn't without challenges, but as you can see, my head is still attached. Thank you, sir, for your patience, mentorship, and support. Uh, having you and your wife flying from Texas to join me in the ceremony today means the world to me. Thank you to our dear friends who have supported us through the years. Carlos and Eusenia Secho, Harry and Amber Fulmer, Miguel and Dia Morales, who are here today. Uh, George and Yvonne Gomez, Andy and Esther Ariola, Richard and er uh, Ali Martinez, Joe and Romina, and many more that I can't mention by name. You know who you are. Thank you. To Colonel Plummer, Matt Waring, Stu Hatfield, Dan Williams, John Sills, and all my coworkers, thank you for making me feel welcome. Uh, as the general mentioned earlier, I'm a communication, communications officer by trade, and when I got here, my only acquisition experience was writing a UFER or uh, talking to the PM about shifting a fielding. This is me listening into calls the first three months that I was here in the Pentagon. Okay, 
We need to check CAMS for the ACDD and ensure we be, we're in adjudicated <laughs> accordance with the CRM. We need to ensure the project is on schedule so we can prep for the ARB, ACB, and ARC. Ultimately, we want to go from 6163 across the Valley of Death and the 64 and beyond. Goal is to compete in SPAR Pomp 25 and, and transition from ST to RTD and E. In my mind, I was, well, like elemental PXYZ to you too. I didn't understand <laughs> <laughs> anything they were talking about. Uh, but in the last six months, I've learned so much from each and every one of you. Thank you for your professionalism and trust. I couldn't be prouder of the work that we do here. Finally, I wanted to thank Rusty Brennan. Uh, thank you so much for putting this together. Uh, Rusty takes these on as additional duties and never asks for anything in return. Uh, thank you for all your hard work and dedication you put into this event and for making it so enjoyable for my family and I. In closing, Lieutenant Colonel has been a dream of mine since I was a kid. I always tell people I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't rather be working anywhere else. I'm extremely proud to be a leader in the U.S. Army formation of over 1.4 million strong, the most formidable force of the modern age. Thank you, and God bless all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please stand and join in the singing of the Army song. Lyrics are printed on the back of the program. <laughs> March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high day, the army's on its way. Count up the cadence loud and strong. For where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony. A receiving line will be formed on the stage for you to congratulate Lieutenant Colonel Mudd and his family. A reception will be held on site at the rear of the venue. Thank you.